Hello again. This is the second video I'm making about the blood of Christ. The first one was on the subject, is it biblical? Is it correct to plead the blood? The conclusion was, no, it's not because it's not biblical. But it is correct to apply the blood. And in that video, we looked or looked uh, the scriptures in Exodus 12 about how Moses was instructed to teach the Jews to put the blood of a lamb, a lamb for a household, a spotless lamb, kill it, put the blood on the doorposts and the lintel. Now, the blood was to be collected in a bowl and then put onto the doorpost, sprinkled on the doorposts with a bunch of hyssop, a local weed. Now, that's what we looked at in the last video. Now, how does that apply to us? We're not in the situation that the Jews were in, about to be threatened or uh, potentially threatened by an angel of death coming over in the night, which killed all the Egyptian firstborn. We're not in that position. We, as Christians, we have to know how to apply the blood to ourselves. Now, the Apostle John was a real nuisance to the uh, Romans, and um, they tried to shut him up, put him on an island called Patmos in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And from that island, he had the apocalypse or the revelation of Jesus in heaven. He saw all the things that we read about in Revelation and try to understand the, the vision of the end times from that uh, from that book, from that Revelation book. One of the most famous verses uh, that John recorded when he saw an angel, I'm reading it here from, from uh, Revelation 12, he said, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. I like that. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuse them before God day and night. Now, we're in a war. Not sure if you realise that we're in a war. There is a spiritual war going on. When you look at the uh, things going on in our world at the moment and the conflicts that are threatening, there's a war all the time. And it's a war between Christ and the Antichrist, between God and the devil. Now, in order to win in life, we have to win in that war. We have to fight doesn't matter whether you want to fight or you don't want to fight. You've got to fight the fight of faith. We are soldiers in God's army. And how do we overcome the enemy? In uh, Revelation 12, verse 11, they overcame him, that is the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, if we believe that we are soldiers, like 2, P 2 Timothy 2 talks about, good soldiers. When you become a soldier, you don't get the army to uh, write you um, a piece of paper saying, we're guaranteeing that you won't be killed, you know, in, in, we're in a war. And uh, we need to live with an attitude that uh, we love not our life to the death. If we die for our faith, we die for our faith. It's as simple as that. There's no clause that says we may not be called upon to die. We may well be called upon to die. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. The second part of that, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. How did the Jews take the blood from the bowl and put it onto the doorpost? They did it with hyssop, yeah? We have to apply the blood, take it from the, the truth that Jesus died, and apply it to our lives. How do we do that? We do it by the word of our testimony. Now, that word of a testimony is what we say when circumstances get tough. We may think, well, everything is going wrong today. All the circumstances are against us. I'm under a lot of pressure and stress and what you say in those circumstances is extremely important in hebrews 3 and verse 1 it says jesus is the high priest of our profession or confession 
What we say, how we testify with our mouth, our words are very, very important. They are what put the blood on us. They are what apply the blood. This is a spiritual law. Jesus made this clear in Mark 11, 23. It says that uh, we, shall, uh, we shall have what we say. And then in Matthew, Matthew 12 and verse 37, he said it in another way. By our words, we will be justified. And by our words, we will be condemned. If in a difficult situation, you come out with a load of panic and, oh, poor me, and why does everything always happen to me? And so this is a poor word of testimony. We need to testify that the blood of Jesus is, is speaking for us in that uh, holy place on Mount Zion, in that heavenly court. And we need also to avoid self-criticism. Criticism of ourselves is not a good idea. We are God's handiwork. So if you criticise yourself, in Ephesians 2.10 it says, we're God's handiwork created unto good works. If we criticise ourselves, we're criticising his handiwork. So we need to watch what we say and make sure that the word of our testimony is there. When we speak, have this image. You are putting the hyssop in the bowl and you are applying the blood to that situation. Not plead the blood, we apply the blood. And then when we apply the blood, we get benefits. We are redeemed. I'll just say the first one. We'll look at these again in the next video. We're redeemed. That means we're bought back from the slavery of sin. I'm not a slave. I'm a free man. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So the word of our testimony is very important. That's the hyssop that puts the blood on our lives. So be very careful what you say. And we'll look at some things that we need to be saying in the next video, seven benefits of applying the blood by the words that we say. I look forward to seeing you then.